So today we will run through the second canto of the book of faith, the problem of pain. This is the most metaphysical canto in the Sadhguru. And the issue has been haunting all the thinkers since ages, since perhaps man began to think why this world exists in this world. And we have plenty of it in the Eastern philosophy, in the Western philosophy. Greek philosophy is full of necessity, chance, chaos. In India also we have near the heart here, all this is constantly appearing in the literature, in all these themes. But of course, such a thing does not find any significant increase in a way. The scriptural, scriptural literature, neither in the Vedas nor in the Upanishads, not even in the Gita, in that way, of course, not in the Bible from that angle. But the metaphysical part, I mean, that the contribution of the three minds. It has a different tone and understanding. Now, it is this particular aspect which is now being highlighted in this canto. And we have said the whole problem is put in the mouth of Savitri's mother, the queen, the riddle of this world. The riddle of this world. And it pinpoints immediately what the purpose, what the whole objective of this creation. Where are we, who is, what are we here for? Is there somebody who has created this problem deliberately? Or it has arisen out of some kind of helplessness of the creator? I mean, these are the issues. If it is out of helplessness, then again it means that we cannot really do much. It is left to chance, we just cannot do anything for us. If it is a design thing, then perhaps we can understand the design and work out something by which this problem can be overcome. Savitri has already taken the decision to be with such a one. She is told by another that he is going to die one year after the marriage. Savitri's mother is terribly upset about the whole thing. It is not acceptable to her at all. It cannot be acceptable to her at all. And she pleads to Savitri to give up this particular idea of hers to marry Sukhavan and instead find some other use. But Savitri is wrong. She is absolutely certain that there is something within her which prompts her that this synthetic all that she has to do is stick to her decision. And in fact, one of the things which Narad is doing by making the death of Sukhavan known is he is stealing the will of Savitri. Stealing, make it firm, absolutely firm. He wants that this should happen. Yes, death is there, but Savitri should not change her mind from that. Now that was to be something very strange to any human reason, obviously. 
but Narada has some other reason. And therefore, all along he says, it is decreed that Sitraman must die. Then Savitri announces that nothing doing, I have done. Is it chosen? Is it done? Then she says that everybody in the palace hall remains quiet. And therefore, a siren seemed the irrevocable decree. Nobody is speaking at all. Irrevocable decree. That Savitri has, sorry, that Narada has announced the death of Sukhavan. That is a decree, irrevocable decree. Now, this irrevocable decree, now, in the new context, would also mean that it is Savitri's will. And that is irrevocable. Savitri is will. That is irrevocable. Silence see not what Narada has said, but what Savitri has decided to. Her, her decree, her decision, that itself is an irrevocable decree. She is not doing it. It is coming from her high source and she is from that decision. And therefore we have here something very significant. The world of fate, in fact it's mine, the world of fate that fell from heavenly lips makes it very clear that Narada is only an instrument to speak about his death. It came out from those lips. That does not mean that it is he who has a degree. He is simply uttering. He is getting himself to speak out about that degree. And because it is irrevocable, nothing can be changed in that. Or so it seemed. One voice, in spite of that, one voice person changes this image. That is Savitri's mother. She is questioning the destiny, obviously. Now, the whole point is it is a decree. Savitri is from in her resolve. So what is this one voice going to do? At the most it will question. But it stands absolutely helpless. It will question. It will perhaps try to understand the whole situation. Try to rationalize the whole thing. Try to adjust herself emotionally with what is being decreed about that. But I almost can question it, but you have to accept it finally. Then what she is doing. And therefore she a mother's heart had heard a grateful speech. And therefore she is questioning. She fell in hidden inevitable head in the human life, you see. And then a while she felt the level of human mind. Now that is a great compliment to the queen. Normally she is very well poised in the approach to life and the problems of life. She knows how to meet the crisis of life. But this is a crisis she cannot easily accept. And therefore, she has become human. Otherwise, she is a spiritually qualified person, a highly evolved individual. She is Ashwapati's queen. She has that kind of a spiritual capacity. And what does she do? Why is she? She is questioning. Questioning not for herself, but questioning on behalf of the earth. On behalf of the earth. 
And then what we have now, what is what is the little of the world, the little of this world. Oh, seer, in this strange, quiet nature life, seer, she is addressing. Now there is seer because he knows all these things. He has seen all these things, you see. Quiet nature, why did he simultaneously joy and grief? Why the opposite exists? In fact, pain and grief are twins, as we have seen earlier. Pain and grief are twins. And between them, pain is the first born of the twins. First comes pain and then comes joy and grief. Joy and love. Pain and joy. Pain and joy are the twins. And pain comes first, joy comes afterwards. That is by nature. So she is asking now, is it necessary that because of some specific compulsion by design, by some arrangement, that this has happened, that there should be pain and joy simultaneously? Is there a purpose behind that thing? Therefore, she is asking. What is the mystery of grief and pain? If God is all good, is all benevolent, then where is this thing coming from? What is the original thing? And therefore, she is asking now a grand question which you have seen many times. Is it thy God who made this cruel law? Die God. <laughs> she is really accusing, she is really blunt about it. It's been really funny. If it is not your God, if it is not your Vishnu who has made this great world, great law, then is it that he stands helpless now that some disastrous power has intervened? And mark his work. If it, is your God, if it is not your God, then how is it that some disastrous power has entered in and mark his work? Or some disastrous power has marked his work. And therefore, a fatal seed was sown in life's soil. So she is now questioning that thing, and then there is a long description on the plight of man and what not is it our body is in cunning way this is all that things is now narrating as a story and finally she comes to this point an imperfect worker given a baffling task an ignorant judge of problems given a spirit is given words like Reach close and tearless gate, his glorious outburst fitted out in man. That is what man's doing at the machine. And therefore, she says, On nature's gift to man a curse was laid. Where from had that curse from? Where from that curse from? All was in arm, virtue the great bondage, and in jail. And she narrates again, at every step is laid for us this snare. Which is true. And then, of course, she says, What is our life? Our life is a growing register of calamities. Keeps on fighting. The law book keeps on building up, you see. Now, the computer data sheet. Is quite huge. It has run into several megabytes of calamities. See. In the past account, the future's book of fate. The centuries piled man's follies and man's crime upon the countless crowd of nature's Now, this is the karma 
which you constantly meet. Sensory is by man's body, all of our past karmas, past actions, they come and affect our present life also. A crop of misery is obstinately is so disinterested. And then she says, in spite of all the difficulties, what have you done? You have not done anything at all. Nothing has he learned from dying and history. That is our stupidity. We have been taught lessons all along, but we refuse to learn the lesson. And finally, all he has achieved, he drags to the precipice. Very important. A part author of the cosmic tragedy is very conspires with death and time and fate. So, we are our own creators, makers of our life. We are the author of the tragedy. We are in it. Don't blame somebody else, so to say. We are author. How it has happened? And it is our will which joins with death and time in it. We kind of blend ourselves to the working of death in time and it conspires. Somehow we are in love with death and time and fate and it is one of things. So therefore we are the author of our own studies. His soul's wide search and ever returning force pursue the useless orbit of the curse. And therefore, all is an episode in a meaningless tale. It is a long story, long epic, and there are many episodes in it. So our life is a small episode in the epic of life. Yeah, of course, this question is pinpointing now. Why is it all and wherefore are we here? This, this is my story. Why am I here for? What am I here for? What is the purpose of my existence here at all? Why am I accept life at all? And then she gives a few reasons to understand this question. Why is it all and wherefore are we here? What are we are here? If life is such a story of misery, it's such a tragedy, why do we live such a life at all? What are we here for? Why we come here at all? Well, one argument would be yes. Life is like this. And the best thing for you is to get out of this and attain liberation elsewhere and live this. If to some being of eternal bliss is our spirit's destiny, we are here. So you abandon this life, you try to get out of this life and attain the bliss elsewhere. That is possible. You can live in heaven, you can have moksha, you can be a free person, you will say the eternal bliss, you can enjoy that. You can live, you can be an immortal in the world of truth and live there permanently. That is what we think this is worth pursuing in the Sadhana. If that is the aim, then what is the purpose of this creation? Why this creation at all here? It looks as though that this creation is 
and illusion is a dream, is false, is fictitious, has no value. This is what Sri Guru said. Since that we are, and out of that we came, if everything is God's creation, if from bliss we have come, and if to bliss we are going back, we have come from bliss, to bliss we are going back, then what for we have come here? What is the purpose of being here at all? It sounds to me kind of ridiculous then, you see. This interlude or whatever this existence, because then meaning is complete, you see. It's a very powerful argument. In fact, this is the argument against the ascetics. The ascetics refuse. Saying that we are, and out of that we came. Man's road is strain, sterile, interlude. What call this interlude? This existence, this life here. Lasting in vain. Well, if that is not the case, then all in these beings must be and their brief lives. What need and the soul of ignorance and tears? Yes, you have to be in life. Alright, that is the possibility. But then, by this pain, by this suffering, what is it that the soul is going to gain? Soul has come here, what is it going to gain from this misery? When sorrow is power of sorrow and pain, but she is asking me to So that is the second order we should put Or, all came helplessly. Is that because? Is it that? Well, I mean, that's how it has happened. You have kind of stumbled or fallen into this pit, and now you are leaving the pit. And the best thing for you is try to get out of the pit. What power force the immortal spirit to birth? If it is not helplessness by which you have fallen in this one, was it that? Some power forced the immortal spirit to come here. Was the immortal spirit compelled to take this birth? Or who persuaded it to fall from this? You are happy there in the transcendent. Who has told you to come here? Who persuaded it? Come, this is a very good place. This is this. You are kind of trapped by the persuasion. Or who lay away the serious will to live, a wanderer in this beautiful, sorrowful world, and bear its load of joy and grief and love? Who persuaded to bear its load of joy, grief and love? He says in the whole book, joy and grief and love. If there is no persuasion, then was there some impersonal necessity which compelled for you to take birth here? If it is not necessity, then if these are not a thing, then perhaps this whole world is an illusion. Maya, Mithya. But where then, if it is an illusion, then where then is the soul's security? If this is a dream, if this is Maya, then my soul is not being secure here at all, you see. Perhaps the soul will feel is only a dream. So her summary is basically, she is not able to find this fact, or this there is not that. So perhaps the soul itself is a fiction, is a gland of a dream. Better than self. A fiction, sense in trance. You are in Samadhi, and in that Samadhi state, you think of self. Perhaps it is a fiction. How do you know that it is true? <laughs> I don't know that. So, this is the riddle of the world. She is trying to understand 
he is taking enormous trouble, pain, in kind of clarifying the whole issue in a rational manner, so that the rational mind can go beyond where he is. So he is serving the purpose of the rational mind also. It is in fact a part, an aspect of his responsibility towards the spiritual evolution of man towards the higher possibilities. And Narada is fulfilling that role also here by elaborating. He is talking for about two hours now, not for the doing of this man or that man, that the rational mind really now goes forward. It opens out. And then, then after the silence, Narada can reply, tuning his lips to earth his sound. Well, he has to speak in the idiom, in the phrase of man, so that man can understand, the rational mind can understand, and then see a higher light and other possibilities. He is for a song with freedom, solemn life. So that is the power of his speech. You see, this is something which is absolutely remarkable. Narad is already a rigorous being, but when he is going to water these things now, he becomes kind of brighter than what he is. Turn to carry the supernal cause, and then bear in that light time toys. He is the most sophisticated. This is the greatness of Narada. He is unseen the most detected. Narada is looking slow, the working of time. And he has detected what time he is going to achieve. He has already seen. Why this event, why all these things are happening now, he has already seen now. Well, the man must die, this will happen, that will happen, and all those things. He has already detected those possibilities. He will not know the full details, but he has already some kind of an idea of things which will happen that way. Detectives passing him unfinished. You see, time is calling since the beginning of time. Through years and years, from the beginning of the whole process, time is calling. Now Nara sees this time is going to open up to newer time. Something new is going to happen in the days. So that is what has happened. Suddenly Nara himself now is going to inspire. He is a different person when he could utter that news. As if there is a possible inrush of inspiration in him and they could hold it. And out of that he is going to speak. And then, of course, he is going to tell in the manner of a rational being all that he has to answer this away the issue raised by the queen. His answer is, as we have seen earlier also, you can divide it in, into five parts. The first is, the necessity of pain. Yes, we are talking about pain, but it is a necessity for pain. It is the first part of the answer. Then, if there is a pain, you have to sacrifice every single part of it. You have to sacrifice. The third one is yes, there is grief, there is suffering, there is misery, and all that thing in creation. But then the world the Redeemer also comes here. And what is his task, the world Redeemer's task? There is a third thing which he would narrate. And then he says, You are a mental being, you are a rational person. Take a cautious rational path. Don't Jump on the road the manner of a titan. Don't be egoistic. Don't be Rajasthan. Don't be Asuric. Don't follow 
the path of the Titans. Titans don't avoid Titans. So he says, don't take the Titans road. And then finally, he answers the open point which is raised by the queen. Why they can get a dog? What for? Why is it you? If it is not to stay here, you are there happy. We will be again happy when you go back here. Then why can't get it all? What for? What is necessity? Then, in that context, he says, Look, you are happy here. But it was your choice to come down here and experience the joy of new adventure. It is your choice, you have a choice to come down here. This is to adventure, the joy of faith. Joy of getting joy through faith. Exceeding. A life, a fuller life through the process of death. That is why we have come here. Had you been there, you would not have been able to experience that at all. You would have been static there, frozen there, as you are there all along. But the new creative joy which can come constantly, new creative life which can appear constantly is through this process only. Therefore, we have to We have taken a conscious decision to plunge into this darkness so that we can see a greater glory and increasing glory. You are there in a glorious world, but that glory is kind of a fixed glory. It does not expand, it does not change, it is static, it is frozen. But here, there is a constant progressive manifestation possible or the possibility is created. That is why we come here. So, out of the curiosity or the shadow cast by the truth in the heavens here, I am not only this shadow here for you have come here. So, these are the few points Nara is going to elaborate. In his answer to the queen. And later on, the argument will be extended further through the query of Ashwapati. Ashwapati is asking him later on, well, the spirit has taken his position stand. Here in this inconscient world, in the darkness here and all that, he has accepted this nature. But then he is the spirit governed by death and ignorance. He has come here, he is governed by death and ignorance. Can it not overpower them, overrule them, and assert itself with directives? And again, I don't need to go answer to that question. He says, that is the process by which things are moving forward. And finally, of course, he will tell that what Savitri is going to do is absolutely unique. And there is no place at all anywhere for human intervention. We quickly run through some of these arguments. And the first thing which he is saying is, he is telling the queen, O oh queen, thy heart is a light of the ignorant. You are living in an ignorant world. And you, by that you are asking, this riddle of this world which you are seeing is a light of the ignorance. It is a rational mind's query. Rational mind's difficulty. What is a rational mind? Rational mind is the light of ignorance. It is by that you are seeing the whole thing. Thy mind's light hides from the eternal thoughts. Where ignorance is? Yes. So, first he has said, already look, you are living in the world of ignorance. And if there is ignorance, I am sorry, you are interested. You have to bear pain. Where ignorance is, their suffering too must come. It is indisputable. You are arguing today, 
light of ignorance, you are living in an ignorant world and you live in ignorance, you have to suffer. Sorry, there is no other way, there is no hope at all. In the dead he says now, in one call with joy came forth the dreadful power. In life's best was born. And in when pain came first, then joy to be. Unless there is pain, joy cannot be here. As long as you are living in the world of ignorance, it is but natural. It is, that is how this is going to happen here. By pain, a spirit started from the clock. And then, of course, it will describe now the whole story of evolution how God became this, 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 he managed all that. Pain and joy made the hammer of the gods to break dead resistance. You are opposing the entry of knowledge. You are in the world of ignorance. How to break that resistance? Pain is the only. His slow energy as a living stone. If the heart were not forced to want and weep, his soul would have laid down content. Would have remained what you are doing. So pain is. In fact, without death, you cannot really make progress. Life cannot progress without death. It is impossible. And therefore, he says, this earth is full of anguish because, yes, gods are concerned about the whole thing. The spirit is doomed to pain. Really, man is free. The spirit is doomed to pain. Till man is free. There is no, there is no alternative at all. And it is in this context, Ashwapati is asking, is then the spirit ruled by outer nature? Men die that man may live and God be born. That is the whole purpose of our death. To bring the birth of God. Yes, the birth of God has to take place. How? When he who saves himself lives bare and calm. The Savior comes here to save you from pain. In the second point, now is the sacrifice of the being of Purusha. In fact, he is utilizing. As an example, so to say, of Christ's sacrifice, crucifixion. He who saved himself lives bare and calm. He who saved the race must share his pain. The great who came to save his suffering world and rescue out of time, shadow and law must pass with the yoke of grief and pain. They must carry load of grief and pain. I come here to save the world. And then of course it comes specifically to make it very specific focus. The son of God or as the son of man, he must carry the cross of suffering. He can come here as a savior. He has come and therefore, the death is paid. What God owes to man, that has been paid. And he will not score second. In fact, eternal suffers in a human form. He can suffer only in the human form. You see, up there for him, there is no personal suffering. Because he has accepted human form. Human form is a product of inconscience. And when he accepts it, naturally he is bearing the suffering of inconscience, inconscience. 
for eternal up there, there is no question of inconscience at all. There is no question of suffering. But when he comes here as an avatar, as an incarnate, when Christ comes here as an avatar, he has to suffer. He has signed the Sanitation Testament, which is blood. His love has paved the martyr's road to heaven. He has given his life and life to balance here the dark account of martyr in heaven. That is what he has done this for. He has done it. It is finished. He has paid the price. Christ is on the cross and the last phrase which he utters is, it is finished. My job is done. Whatever I had to do, I have done. Finished. The dead mysterious sacrifice. The dead mysterious sacrifice. That is what he has done to you. See. Offered by God, heart and body into the world. And of course, we have seen many times this man. His knowledge, immortal, triumphs by his. He must die in order that his knowledge triumphs him. His immortal knowledge becomes victorious here. For that knowledge to become victorious here, he must die. And as I said earlier, this was one of the lines which is added at the time of the last temptation by Shivan. And in that sense, it is very biographical, autobiographical. The soul he is going to withdraw. He has to pay his body's death. The soul's last life. If he pays his body's death, then only his knowledge will triumph here. Now this Savior comes. And everywhere he will be ancient adversary force. He has to be ancient adversary force. He is born out of inconscience. Ancient. The birth of inconscience is his birth here. In fact, when does the birth take place? When life entered into the material scene, then only death was born. Until then there was no death. When life enters into the material scene, death springs up from the conscience. That is the ancient adversary force as far as life is concerned. It is in response to the entry of life into matter that the inconscious drew an answer to life in the form of death. In the form of there is no death otherwise. Same thing, when this enters into creation, there is the answer from below of pain, of suffering, of grief. When truth enters here, then springs up also. The ancient adversary force has its birth. Then the higher power enters into the process of this creation. In other words, until then, all those powers are dormant, are asleep, are lying low, so to say, in inconscience. Then awakes with the appearance of life in matter. And when life comes here into matter, it's such joy, feeling, happiness, gladness, that she will make the whole world and even heaven. She's happy moving all around. But suddenly, she meets adversity force, death. 
si están and stop. No, you cannot do this. Now, it is good that death should spring up when life is entering. Perhaps that is necessity. Death may look to us in the immediate context something like an adversary force. In the immediate context, it may look like an adversary force. But life itself, herself, cannot progress in the material scene unless she constantly renews herself. Renews herself. And therefore, death is necessary. In other words, death steps in to see that life makes progress. See that life makes progress. He die in the world like a newborn. And new. There's no purpose, newborn. Therefore, he has to die. And that can happen only because of death. And then, of course, it again, he says here also, and adversary force was born of force. In fact, this phrase, adversary force, appears three or four times in Nara's speech, you see. Adversary force, you see. Invader of the life of mortal man, it hides from him the straight immortal path. The path is straight, immortal path, but he hides the path. Because if he does not, if he if he could follow straight path, he will miss many things around, around him. He will miss many things all around him, see. Which is which means that your accomplishment, your achievement will not be in the fuller extent, fuller context, you see. You are missing certain things. If you could go through the tunnel, through forest, going around in different directions, you will see different aspects of the whole life there. And that way, you kind of enrich yourself by taking a curved path. A power came in to build a car and drive. This is this is done. This is the inner war without escape. And you cannot escape it, you see. You have to fight this adversary force, ancient adversary force. So that is the first point I will be taking. The second point, the third point rather, is about the world dreamers task. Yes, the world dreamer comes, but the people who you would like to save, they themselves become his enemies. Those you save are his antagonists. This world is in love with his own ignorance. This is pretty. So, his darkness turns away from Savior light. He gives the cross in payment for the crown. That is what has happened to Christ. He came to the rule of love from heaven. And what was he offered? Crown of cross. He was given the cross. His words had taken the spender and long night. He seemed the long heart of time. And what is done? Only little is one. The human mass, little spirit, the yoke. It goes on, the world goes on. Maybe if you are saved. But mostly all of them are lingering the pain and suffering. Escape cannot uplift the abandoned the race or bring to it victory. And the reign of God. Not by leaving this world, but by trying to receive a greater power must come, a larger light must come. And with that, we must receive. Although light grows on earth and night descends, 
Yes, carry the evil slave. The light in which he was in constant face. He must labor on. The word the birth must labor on. Till the adversary falls again. See the face again for the third time again. Till the adversary falls his face. One yet may come are not invincible. Man turns aside or chooses either path. He keeps the one high and difficult road. The soul can climb to the eternal streets, but the limits fall from his of earth and heaven. There God transcends uses as his king. The world never comes. He has broken into the conscience and depths. That very themselves even from their own regard. He has seen God's lover save his magic world. This is the labor of God. God's labor. Broken into the conscience depths. That is God's labor. This can be known. He has bought a term God fashioning matter's frame. Dream dreams of his unknowing sea and what the unconscious foes and build the stars. Arisons of nothingness and to us nothingness. Uh, now these are the two nothing we have seen right in the beginning of Sanctuary also we have got the first and the last nothingness arisen from nothingness and towards nothingness turned nothingness, this first nothingness here is the inconscient void the last nothingness is the non-manifest which is the drawing his dark and potent nations was earth's start. He did the waste cup of his all was made. Into his deep creation, into his deep creation can plant. This that is the danger. He must know the thought that moved the demon act. If the creation is not to fall into the pit, he must know the thought that moves the demon hand. For this, he must go down into the pit. For this, he must invade the dollar's glass. That is the work of the author. That is the work of the world demon. He must go down. Now, In fact, this is most specific to here. He must go down into the pit. How many of us have gone have done that? Much one. <laughs> Who has done that? He must travel hell. World to save. In the desert and light, he shall emerge, and then, of course, the glory. Then shall we enter the law of faith. When all that is done, when the world demon has done his task, then the law of faith shall be terminated. For that faith. If pain came with ignorance, if pain came with ignorance, as then the law of pain can end only with the ignorance ending itself. So, law of pain ending means the pain ignorance itself coming to an end. They go to evil Unless the super mind comes here, 
knowledge comes here, pain can't go away. Urge to be made, at that time of course, urge to be made a form of heaven's life. Well, that is the heuristic. Invading matter, the spirit's ray, awakening is silent, the mountain top, awakening the dumb maha, the living world. This mortal life shall house eternity in this. The body's self test immortality. That is what will happen when the law of pain is over, is terminated. In other words, when there is no more ignorance, then the mortal life shall house eternity in this. This cannot live in ignorance. And the body itself is immortality. Now, this is something very cautious on the part of Nanak. Yes, long pain is over. And body itself can taste immortality. Is it taste? It does not say that the body will be transformed. It will have a taste of immortality, alright. The transformation of body is something more than that. It may start happening from that point onward. But the first step is body is experiencing this joy happiness. Does not necessarily mean that it is transformed. It is taste. Now that is all that is the best now can say. It is best that now can say. He can taste because he is not strongly being here. I just say that. Then shall the world it must start with them. Now therefore we have here. This limitation or a world demon's task. What will the world demon achieve finally? So to say. He will see that the body self is immortality. That is what he will see. Body self is this immortality. If things have to happen more than that, then that is another step. There, the divine power, divine shakti, savitri, has to step in and do something else, which means that savitri's task is something more than a task of the world redeemer. Yes, certainly she will be instrumental to some extent, but that is not going to be all of Savitri's work. That the body will face immortality. That is a task of the world redeemer. Savitri is more than that. The incarnate mind shakti is going to see something more. Until that happens, life must carry its seed of death. Obviously, if life is carrying the seed of death, if life is going to carry the seed of death, body can at the best taste the mortality. It cannot live the mortality. Now, that is coming to the final point in answer to the queen. If we are happy there, why do we come here? Why come here at all? What are the problems? And now I was thinking, good care of that question. He said, 
O mortal who constrains your death and fate, accuse none. It's corporate. It will blunt. Accuse none. Because you have yourself power this harm for you. Accuse none of your harm thyself as God. This stubborn world thou hast chosen for thy home. Thou art thyself the author of thy fate. It's not my God, but I am sorry. <laughs> you have been accusing my God for that. <laughs> it's not that. It is you yourself to the author of fate. Don't complain. Once in the immortal boundlessness of self, the mass of truth and consciousness and life and interminable bliss. Truth and consciousness and light and bliss. Once you are there, you are in Satchitananda. You are there in the transcendent. You are happy there. And you knew yourself. That you are deathless, you are timeless, you are spaceless, and you saw the eternal and live in infinite. When you are the transcendent, that is what you were all along. But then you felt curious about something. Then, curious of a shadow thrown by truth. Is trained towards some other place of self. It was drawn to an unknown face, peering into the night. Something was coming out of the night and looking at you, a shadow, and you became curious of that. What is that animal? What is that beast? What is that? You will get to try to understand that. Curious of a shadow, thrown by truth. It became no shadow. You are in truth, but you became curious of her shadow. Why? Because when you are there, you sense something infinite even about this shadow. You sense a negative infinity, something opposite to what you are. A voice of one who repents exists, imitating God. That lies of birth and death and ignorance of life, and it hovered dreams of a transient soul. And then he says, Well, this is what happened, you jumped here. And then mind arose, just stared at nothingness. The eternal consciousness became the home of some unsold, almighty inconscient. In fact, that is the first separation. Eternal consciousness itself turned into inconscient. One breathed no more, the spirits made you care. As one drawn with the candor of the void, the soul attracted clay to the abyss. So, this is what happened to you. You were happy up there, but then. You saw the grandeur, the greatness, the glory of this void, the shadow, you became curious of the shadow, and you got attracted by it. It longed for the adventure of ignorance, and the marvel and surprise of the unknown. What you could emerge after this, that unknown, you became curious of that. And the end is possibility that lurked in the womb of chaos. So you sense something already there in the nothing, in the chaos. You saw some possibility, you became curious and you wanted to work out that possibility. Therefore, you had jumped into this chaos. A world of hard endeavor and difficult toil and battle on extension of perilous world, a clash of foes, etc. Et 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 that is what you opted for. Because you have opted, you saw that thing, that possibility, therefore a huge descent began. You started coming down. A giant fall. That is the first.
first part. For what the spirit sees, creates a truth. And what the soul imagines, is made to a word. Because you are transcendent, you saw certain possibilities. Because you saw the possibility, you imagine those possibilities. Yes, they are bound to materialize. They are bound to happen. Thus came born to a blind, tremendous choice. Blind, tremendous choice. You saw the possibility. This great perfection, this contented world, this haunt of ignorance, this home of pain. There are fish disasters, griefs, and quarrels. A vast disguise concealing eternal spirit. Thus came born from a blind, tremendous choice. That is the reason for this pain. First ignorance and then pain. Again, he will particular. First, this haunt of ignorance and then home of pain. This time we have seen many times. This haunt of ignorance, this home of pain. First comes ignorance, then comes pain, as we see in the universe. All of blind, tremendous choice. Blind, tremendous choice. You are up there, you became curious. But you did not know how things are going to emerge, are going to happen. The shadow is so thick, you could not see through. You were sort of blind. And in that blindness, you made a choice. Yes, let me go and jump into it. You have plunged into it. You have plunged into that ignorance. Naturally, there is bound to be pain. That is what you are here for. It is that vast disguise which the eternal has taken that the Christ is covered in that living pain. So, that is the elaborate answer that is giving. It is a very rational answer. Of course, there are deep, often realities embedded here. When the soul creates their own reality, but there are many, many, many souls that should have created different reality. But what came was the ignorance, that jumped into the ignorance. Yeah. So, what the soul um, sees, where was this here? The soul sees and creates, it. it's like what the spirit sees, it creates the truth. And what the soul imagines is made a world. That's but right. there are millions and millions of souls. Yeah. So that's my question. I mean, uh, I may have seen something, but it also will have seen something else. No, I mean, the the, the, the creation, no, the, 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 what is so imagined, what is very that makes it work. Then you see. Yes, yeah, but and so not only one soul, there are many, many souls. She is the life you're talking about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What the spirit sees creates a truth. Yeah. What the soul imagines is made a word. Yeah. Now, the truth has turned into falsehood. By its choice, that does not mean that it is really falsehood. It is a certain manner of truth expressing itself for something else, which to you temporarily may appear opposite. But otherwise, what it is creating is the truth. Inconscience is there. You may call it false of this thing, that thing is interested in But it is a truth. So what the truth has imagined, what the spirit has imagined, has become a truth of a different type for a different purpose. Yeah, but the world was already made. And what the soul yeah. imagines is made a world. That is of course straightforward, straightforward. 
the greater difficulty is here in this line. What the spirit sees, he is a truth. So the, the world was already made for the soul to incarnate in. It's not the soul creating the world, it's the world. You see, it's not the spirit. It, uh, for us, in the immediate context, we have the mother story of separation, or the four towers. They separated from the divine origin. They went very far away from the divine origin and turned into their opposites. Consciousness became inconscious, which became suffering, life became and death, truth became also. Now, it does not mean that inconscience follows through death, suffering, and no reality of truth. It is another kind of a truth, another kind of a reality. It is not fictitious. It is good. Now, why that kind of a reality? to evolve, to bring out something different from that state. From that state. You have become falsehood. There is falsehood. For a purpose that out of it, the new possibilities or truth would emerge. The multiplication, the possibilities will emerge from that. Why death? Because through that process, Progress becomes possible in life. Life grows. See, when the life is there, it is another set, in a way, frozen, static, typical, fixed. It does not grow, it does not expand. But through the mechanism of this process, through this process of turning into death, you recreate life constantly. When you are recreating life constantly, it means that. New dimensions of life are opening up. So, in that sense, although it is death, we condemn it wrong that thing, still it is an aspect of a higher truth. When it comes out fully, openly, then it shows its greatness, its grandeur, its beauty, its power, its functioning. And that is the spirit, see, it creates a truth. The fall is for what purpose? Jan fall. Jan fall is to see many things, to rise <coughs> more and more to higher levels. See, from the point of view of growth, expansion, evolution, continuous progress. This is the only way. By remaining in the title world, after all, what is Satyananda? It is the world of knowledge, joy, grace, etc. Et 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 but it is a typical creation. It is kind of fixed. Nothing new can come out of it. But evolution means constantly something new. And therefore, the spirit has taken this process, has, has adopted this process for growing, for expansion. See, in the Sanskrit language, earth is described as Bhumi. Bhumi. Earth is for Bhumi. What is Bhumi? It constantly grows. It constantly expands. It constantly makes progress. It constantly brings out more and more of the spiritual possibilities in operation, in the dynamics of existence. That is Bhumi. See the support for that. 
and lord of this bhumi he is called bhuma the divine he is bhuma in that his idea is to expand more and more not to be confined to what is already there if more and more things have to come out he has to expand then you turn you become a bhumi and become a support allah of the earth of the basics and causes the growth and expand so that is what he does so in that sense we have a very good geocentricity of the spiritual design here earth is center of this creation bhumi Earth is the center of the creation. Everything goes around this earth. The sun, the moon, the ocean, the sun and the world goes around the earth. From the point of view of its upper spiritual working. The category is very different. Upper spiritual working is the center of the earth. And it is out of that place this can open and expand. Now if My this process, if the divine took this established on earth, if the law of pain is terminated, what is the law? The law of pain is terminated. The divine took this established, then the bhumi has served its function. In fact, that was how it should do. She said, "I am here for the sake of your. I don't want anything. I was happy up there." When she was given bones, she was told, "Come, as you, Savitri, who is your husband here, you will say, 'Oh, Savitri, I am sorry, I am not interested in your bones. Whatever I want, I want for the sake of the earth, for the soul of the earth, because it is there this expand, grow continuously. Bhumi, that is her concern all the while, and he the giver, he the bhuma." Who will give the boons to Savitri? So that is the whole idea. Savitri is essentially seeking this moving forward by removing the present obstacle which is in the way, which is also truth created obstacle. You see, it is not something which is arising out of uh, uh, nothing. It is also a truth created obstacle for a certain purpose. Yes, of course. There is a greater truth behind it. Why? Otherwise, why? I mean, when you are in the trance, you feel suffering and all that things. But when you wipe it out, it all disappears. Death has a meaning and a purpose. In fact, Savitri said later on, "You still be present there. I conquered you, but you still be present because I have still need of you." And when this is established in the process of evolution, mm-hmm. then it expands to other worlds, to other worlds. That is why Earth is a significant center. She also says in the book, the little book, the mother, Earth is a significant center. It expands into it is Earth, where you know, says basically she is Bhumi. Who constantly grows spiritually, expands. <clears throat> See the ultimate analysis. There is nothing wrong. There is no way to be less. And the mother, in her agenda, she keeps on saying all the way. That is awesome. It is all divine. You see that. Yoga of the sense, how she is feeling. In the yoga of the sense, she is repeats constantly. In fact, Raman Krishna, it is because of our limitation that we see something wrong in them. But it has a function and a purpose, and that is the truth of it. There are a few more things we will pick up uh, next time, and then uh, <coughs> then we will close the corporate.
we have a whole session 